Okay, so I admit I buried the lead a little bit. What is up guys? Welcome back. So today we are going to be playing with a new brand called Merit Beauty. I saw Merit Beauty for the first time on a few channels that I subscribed to about a month ago. And then you guys started tagging me in a lot of their posts on Instagram, mainly because they have a clean tubing mascara formula. And you guys know I'm a bit of a connoisseur I guess, or at least, you know, a, a hobbyist. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious about different tubing formulas. I really like tubing mascaras. And the rest of the line is very much a like minimal makeup routine kind of thing. It's a, it's a capsule collection of essentials. And it was created by Catherine Power, who founded Versed, uh, the skincare company. And so it does come with, I feel like, just a lot of experience. You can really feel that through the line. So I, was fortunate enough to be in contact with the brand. They sent me this really pretty, right? Little corduroy bag. This is their complimentary bag that they send with your first order. And then I have five of their six products that are out right now. When they sent these to me, these were the products that they had, but I think that recently, like very recently in the last couple of weeks, they have come out with a brow pomade as well. I do wanna try that, but I don't have it on hand. So what I do have is a foundation stick, a highlighter stick, a blush, a lippy, it's like a colored lip oil, and the mascara I was just speaking about. So I'm going to put all of these on my face. I've had a chance to play with these for the last few weeks or so, and I have some, some opinions formed, <laughs> and I'm excited to share them with you, and I'm going to show you kind of how I use these, because I feel like this was conceptualized to be sort of standalone, but you guys know I have to, I have to make these things my own, so I will be editorializing a little bit, but uh, let me move you guys in. We will chat all about the brand, the shade ranges, the prices, and everything, and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hello. Hi. <laughs> if it looks eerily dark in here, it's because the sun hasn't come up yet. I just reassembled a baby diaper genie <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Have you ever, like, I don't know, a diaper genie basically has this, like, accordion folded bag that's brilliant in concept, but if it ever goes wrong and you have to reassemble it, it is a whole ordeal. And I looked at my husband when I was done and I said, who's the diaper genie now? And he was like, you are. <laughs> so I have to start out by saying I made an error in judgment. They asked me what shade I wanted in this and my intent was around matching my complexion, like my main face, <laughs> instead of a concealer shade that would be really brightening. And I kind of overcorrected in that sense. So this is a little bit too deep for me. If you see lines of demarcation and things like that, understand this is a 4K camera. And also my new lighting situation, because I'm compensating for a window and stuff, I've been like blinded a little bit on this side. And so I've been noticing that stuff you'll see in an upcoming video. I just, my blending has not been quite on point. My perfectionism, I'm trying to override it. <laughs> but anyway, this is the shade Linen. And as you can see, it is a little bit deep for me. And so I'm going to use it not really how it's intended to be used. I think it is very much intended to be used like the Westman Atelier stick where you just camouflage little areas and it mimics skin texture. And so it's almost undetectable on the skin. And I think if I had the right shade, it would absolutely do that. And the thing I would probably compare this to in formula is Actually, it's somewhere in between, really. The Westman Atelier stick, it's a little bit softer than that and a little bit dewier than that. And the Glossier Stretch Concealer, oddly enough. The Stretch Concealer has a really unique formula that happens to be very silicone-y, but this doesn't, I don't think it has a whole bunch of silicones. I'm not sure it has any silicones in it, but it manages to kind of mimic that same really nice spreadability on the skin without staying like, I don't know, super movable. It doesn't get greasy and want to slip around on you. So I think that the formula on this is pretty, I don't know, it's pretty advanced. It's pretty sophisticated. 
and I have really enjoyed wearing it. It's kind of funny because I didn't even notice that the shade match wasn't that great until I started filming and I started to notice it when I was in post. And I was like, well, wait a second, this looks perfectly normal in person. And it does, and it has, and I've been wearing it as, you know, as intended for weeks now, but uh, the camera, the camera really exposed me, which I'm sure it's doing again right now. It's just a little bit yellow. And this is the fourth fairest shade, and it is their like light neutral. And I think that I could have just gone for their like fairest neutral shade or even cool because this does seem to lean a little bit yellow, doesn't it? but it is a beautiful formula. It blurs on the skin, it wears really lightly. And I find that for my dry skin, my skin sort of soaks up the emollients of it pretty quickly, like in the first hour or so after putting it on. And then it wears a pretty long time and it's pretty resilient. But I would say from a coverage standpoint, it is light to medium. It can build to a medium coverage situation and it's very agreeable to that, but I would not expect full coverage out of it. I don't think that's really what it's intended for. So yeah, not ideal. And I do want to pick up the more correct shade for me. That complexion stick though does come in 20 shades and it is, you know, 20 is kind of a lot, but it's also pretty expansive. So if I am wearing the fourth fairest shade, that's pretty expansive. Yesterday, <laughs> we took Simon on his first snow walk at the new house. So <laughs> I figured this out and it's actually scientifically proven fact that there is nothing cuter in the world than a baby bundled up in snow gear. <laughs> I found this company called Slouch Headwear and they make all sizes of beanies, but they really mostly advertise to baby beanies. And we got him a few of them. And the one he wore yesterday has a pom pom on it. And it's just a little bit too big for him. He's got a very large head for his age. He's in like the overachieving 99th percentile on his head size. It's kind of ridiculous but we got him the toddler size hat and it was pretty gigantic and it was it was awesome he just looked so cute my husband got this photo of us both smiling what are the odds and he seems to he seems to really like the uh, the snowy weather although it's insane because we just left austin and then you know it's 40 degrees here and it's snowing and in the single digits in austin and no one has power like what? I've never heard, I lived in Austin for 12 years and nothing that surreal ever happened while I was there. It's just, it's crazy. And it's crazy that it happened right when we left for a colder climate. I just, I'm, hmm. for all of my Austin folks, I love you guys and I hope you're doing okay. So that's how it looks on the skin. Hopefully we're blended. I'm a little paranoid now. <laughs> But I do want to go ahead and do just a little bit of contour and bronzer before we jump into the blush. So I'm just going to zoom through that. because I want to give you guys as much detail as I possibly can, but the more detail I give you and the more attempts I make at improving my filming setup, A, the larger opportunity there is for something to go wrong, and B, the more I expose myself. So please forgive my little errors in blending and stuff. So I'm going to now go in with the blush. This is in the shade Cheeky, and it's a really, nice sheer formula and it gives me instant fjords cheeks i chose all of these shades 
just based on the swatches online. I didn't really go by the descriptions or anything, although I think that this is kind of supposed to be like a cool pink color, but they're all really watercolory and they would probably all layer really, really well on, you know, all skin tones. And they do have swatches for lots and lots of skin tones on their website. And so I feel like when I received it, it was very true to the swatches online. That's something that really drives me crazy sometimes. And I feel like a lot of companies have gotten wise to it now that a lot of us are mostly shopping online, not really going in store and swatching things, that uh, the swatches online need to be really accurate. Those photoshopped swatches that they used to do on Sephora just don't fly anymore. I'm just layering that up with a brush and you can just dab this on. I think that that's sort of what they intend for you to do, but Lord knows, I'm just always high maintenance about a tool. I love to pull a tool out. I think that it's faster. I get better blending, better, you know, coverage, more even coverage. So, that is really beautiful, isn't it? And I do just kind of wear it on its own, yes, I bronzed and I contoured, and to me, that helps anything look more at home on me. To me, it's always worth the effort, but I have absolutely worn just these five products on their own, and it's a very, very wearable face of makeup. It is meant to be very one and done, and it does accomplish that. The packaging on all of these is pretty luxurious feeling, but I would say that the blush is kind of the exception. It's kind of lightweight, and it doesn't have any sort of opportunity for the gold detail that you see on some of the other ones. So, excellent, very, very pretty, right? It's just the kind of cream makeup that I think makes you just look like your skin got a drink of water, which is really nice. And it doesn't have, I mean, they do self-identify as a clean beauty brand, but I feel like <sighs> clean at Sephora and they are available at Sephora now. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. They are now being sold at Sephora and on their website, but clean at Sephora is pretty good about vetting performance on clean beauty products because a lot of them that I have tried that aren't clean at Sephora are a little bit greasier or a little bit more like mm, less intelligence kind of built into a complexion product. And this is definitely, again, a more sophisticated formula. All right, let's chat about this here highlighter because I think she's pretty special. So this is in the shade Kava. By the way, the blush comes in five shades. This comes in two shades, this and a rose gold. And it is really beautiful. It took me a minute to kind of warm up to this one because it's a little bit slippy. And for that reason, it kind of made me nervous that it was going to push my makeup around. But what it really does is give you this very sophisticated glow that's not glittery, but also a texture, like a wet texture on the skin. And I just think it's gonna look good on every skin maturity. And that's a lot to say about a highlighter. I think that there was a lot of effort that went into this to make sure that it, you know, didn't expose texture in an unwanted way or anything like that. So that's really beautiful. I enjoy that very, very much. Like I also want to throw this lip on, on top of this little highlight situation here because I feel like they complement each other really well. I love, I'm like never really an upper lip highlight person, but like that, that nails the illusion, doesn't it? Like that makes it look, I don't know, like naturally like I'm being followed around by good lighting instead of like, oh, she's got glitter on her mouth. So this is Sangria. This is their tinted lip oil. I adore this formula because it, is just the right amount of pigment that I don't feel like it takes away from the kind of effortlessness of the rest of the face of makeup. Because a lot of times when I put on a lip color, especially when the blush kind of pulls the natural tones from my lips in such a good way, I often feel like there's no point in putting like a pigmented lip color on. I can just wear a gloss and it feels more natural looking, you know? But this gives me that like French girl thing in a way that I don't feel like is gonna run away. Often I get really frustrated with like pigmented lip glosses that are a little bit loose like this, you know, like that are kind of a lip oil texture because they're hard to keep track of and you feel like they're gonna just spread all over your face when you're not looking. This doesn't do that. It has enough of a thickness to it. Let me swatch it for you. And I feel like it's kind of 
three quarters lip oil, one quarter lip gloss. So you end up with a formula that is very agreeable. It's thin. I would not compare it to a liquid lip balm. To me, it's what the Victoria Beckham Beauty Bitten Lip Tint was going for. I, I don't have the new one, the new shade, but I have the original one. And I always found that it sort of stamped on my lips a little bit because it's a little bit too much like a lip stain. And this has a stain quality to it, but it has enough consistency of the pigment that it wears, it wears for a while like a stain, but consistently, it doesn't stamp. And it's also nourishing, it's a lot more nourishing than a stain. So I just think that that's super pretty. So I am going to put a little bit of eyeshadow on, kind of just an eye contour look and do my brows real quick. And we will come back and talk about this mascara. Okay, so I admit I buried the lead a little bit because I feel like the mascara was the thing that you guys originally wanted me to review this brand for. By the way, the lip oil comes in four shades and it was the hardest one for me to decide because I really felt like all of them would look good on anybody. <laughs> and I do wanna try more of them. So I kind of want to briefly chat while I put this mascara on about the two camps of tubing mascara formulas. There are the people who would rather have that chunky, fast building formula, like an Hourglass or a Thrive Cosmetics or Victoria Beckham Beauty. And the drawback to that formula is, that, or that type of formula, is that yes, it builds really quickly and some people get overwhelmed, also, people have told me that it will kill a curl. If you work really hard at curling your lashes, it is a heavier formula, and so it's going to do a less awesome job of holding the curl. There are definitely mixed reviews on that. I think that the Victoria Beckham is a little bit lighter weight. I think that the Hourglass is a little bit more lengthening, but they do also have the satisfying quality of making really, really thick tubes. So when you get in the shower or you're washing your face, the warm water very easily removes those tubes and they come off without any kind of raccoon eyes or anything like that. And even something like Blink. Blink is on the other end of the spectrum. Blink, the M Cosmetics, the Glossier Lash Slick, they all claim to be tubing or film forming formulas they have the benefit of being buildable. So you can't really build on top of a dried layer of Thrive. For example, your eyelashes will all just stick together. But you can see this one will build after drying down and that is the benefit of kind of a lighter weight formula. It builds, it lengthens, and it also just doesn't chunk up. So you have more control, but that kind of formula is not my favorite typically because the particles are smaller because it's not building the crazy layer on your eyelashes. I guess it's just physics. And so when it washes off, it isn't just quite as satisfying of a, of a process. You know, you don't get those really, really big fat tubes. That's, that's fine. And this is a very, very pretty mascara. It is. I mean, look at that. That's, that's very, very nice. But the issue I have is that this does not behave like a tubing mascara. It does smudge. And it might just be that the particles, again, are really small on the tubing formula quality of it, but I do get a lot of smudging around my eyes. And I've worn this for at least seven different occasions. And I really wanted to be wrong about it. I wanted to be able to find a makeup situation, like powder around the eyes and stuff like that, that might make that not the case, but it's smudged in every case. And also the wash off is not that of a tubing mascara. It does require that I use a makeup cleansing balm in order to thoroughly remove it. And when I get out of the shower after having this on, it gives me raccoon eyes, which to me just says, you know, it's just a normal mascara. There's nothing wrong with a normal mascara, but this does claim to be a tubing formula. And to me, it's not. So that was what I found disappointing, but it is a very 
pretty <laughs> mascara. So that comes in one shade, just in black, and then they also have their eyebrow gel, again, that I do not have on hand, and I believe that comes in three shades. So let's chat about the prices and about the mission of the brand really quickly, and then I will talk final thoughts on all these products. So this is actually called the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. Again, 20 shades in the complexion product, and it is $38. These are all luxury priced, and again, I would argue that you do get the luxury experience, all of the really nice heavy packaging, I'm pulling on the wrong end, and the nice gold details and everything, the blush being the exception, but I still really like the formula. The blush is $28 and it comes in five shades. The Shade Slick Tinted Lip Oil, like I said, four shades and it is $24. The Day Glow comes in two shades, that is the Highlighting Balm, and it is $30. The Brow, like I said, it comes in three shades, a black, a brown, and it appears a gray, which is very cool. And then the, uh, sorry, and that's $24. And the Clean Lash Lengthening Mascara is $26. So this brand, from what I can tell, really aims to hit all the marks as far as Accommodating a minimal routine, the demands of which have been even more emphasized by the nature of our lives in 2020. And I do know that people have their misgivings about clean as a terminology, and you guys know I only use that word if the brand uses that word. So it says luxury can be responsible. We are vegan, cruelty-free, and certified by Leaping Bunny. We aim to eliminate as much virgin plastic as possible from our products and operations, and our shipment packaging is recyclable, reusable, or biodegradable. And from reusable, I'm gathering they mean something like this. A lot of times these brands will be like, oh, it's reusable. I'm like, it's a cardboard box, you know? Like, sure, I could reuse that, but it's a cardboard box. Like, that's a high quality item. It's machine washable. It's truly reusable. So the way that Katherine Power puts it, I just wanna read what she says. In many ways, beauty and self-care has reached a fever pitch. A saturated market with products coming out every few days full of ingredients we can't pronounce, eyeshadow palettes with 50 colors when we only use two, and more and more additions to the list of what it takes to be ready. Does a 10-step skincare routine sound familiar? It does to me, you guys know I gave away my entire unused skincare stash to a women's shelter because I really have been in the mindset of paring down. And I totally understand approaching makeup from that standpoint as well. She says, in 2020, we reset, we learned we don't need much. We've become accustomed to bare nails, natural hair, and days without makeup. We're indulging in minimalism and brands that bring us more with less. Welcome to your morning ritual, Simplified. And they also have a donation program for baby to baby. It says, with the economic and social impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, there are more children living in poverty than ever before. Merit volunteers, donates, and supports baby to baby, a nonprofit organization organization that provides children in poverty across the United States with diapers, clothing, and other basic necessities. At checkout, you can directly donate to baby to baby alongside your order. So really just trying to do good while doing well kind of thing. So that is the brand. Those are the prices. Those are the products. You can see them on my face. This is how it looks. And I am ready to give you my final thoughts on these products now. So the complexion stick, I think it's utterly beautiful. And I don't think that this is a dime a dozen kind of formula. It is pretty hard to formulate a really, really good, solid at room temperature, clean stick foundation. That's why there aren't that many on the market. And there certainly aren't that many that I talk about because a lot of them, especially in the clean beauty space, tend to be kind of greasy or heavy feeling. And this isn't that. It's really, really lightweight. It wears looking like skin in a lot of ways. I think I feel like Am I seeing highlighter or am I seeing a gap in my blush? I think we should probably put some more blush on. Just a touch more blush. I feel like you could play bingo in my videos of the things that I always say. Do we need more blush? The answer is yes. So in the mindset of this being a hero product, I do think that this is a hero product. I feel like a lot of R&D went into this, especially in developing the shade range. And also, like I said, the packaging is gorgeous. The blush, I really enjoy the formula. It reminds me a lot of Salt New York. In the interest of comparison here, I did swatch some Salt New York Cream Tint Pro blushes uh, against this. And actually this one right here is the Merit Beauty. And you can see the, this is Rose, Spice, and then this is actually Raspberry, which is probably the closest. And then that's Cranberry, it's nowhere close. 
So it's not perfectly dupable in the Salt New York formula for actual shade, but if you do like the Salt New York formula, I feel like this formula is very, very similar. And I really like this shade. Again, I got cheeky and it, to me, again, not the heaviest packaging, not the most luxurious out of all of them, but I like the formula enough and I like this delivery system enough. I just think it's really, really pretty. It's easy to use. It's a great color. The highlighting balm. This is really interesting. I think that this is something that is ageless, which is really nice. Like I feel, like my skin feels ageless. Someone talked about the clean beauty aesthetic in my comments the other day. Not just that the appeal of clean beauty was a simplified ingredient list, but also that for the most part, clean brands have this minimalist routine kind of aesthetic. And I feel like this really nails it. You know, even with my editorializing with my contour and my bronzer and my eyeliner and everything, the things, that I feel like make my makeup look like it's done. I still feel like you get this really bouncy, dewy, youthful kind of texture on the skin that, again, it's gonna wear on every single age, every skin maturity, and it makes me feel really beautiful. And this highlighter is definitely part of that. It's an easy thing to overlook because it's just a texture for the most part. Like it does have some shimmer, but no real glitter to it. Let's see if I can get, there you go. And I feel like that's why it doesn't settle in anywhere or anything, but you guys know I also am not a big fan of like a face gloss because I don't get it. <laughs> it's just not my thing. And so I like that this has a little bit of reflectiveness to it and it's sophisticated. It's just a very sophisticated highlight that doesn't necessarily look like a highlighter. Very similarly to the Salt New York or to the Daniel Sandler. And that's why I like the, the formula so much is just because I feel like it's super duper wearable for a lot of different people. The lip, I do feel like this is something that I can't really compare directly to anything. Again, it's not a liquid lip balm. It's not a stain. It is a lip oil, but it's not runny. They really made something unique here and I really like it. It's super lightweight. It's very consistent in pigmentation and it's a shade that I don't think I would necessarily be able to wear if it were more pigmented because it would be really slipping all over the place, but it is not sticky at all, but it's not patchy either. And it's a really, really lovely color. This is Sangria and it is actually the deepest shade that they have. And the fact that it just gives me this like, <laughs> I wanna say bitten lip tint because it really does look like I just took a lap out in the snow. Like that's what I'm going for. And it's almost like Fjord's cheeks for my lips. And that's why I think that it's awesome. <laughs> I just think it looks really, really pretty. It looks at home. It looks native to my skin and I really, I really, really like it. <laughs> and the cat's out of the bag on this. This was the only thing that really disappointed me, which comes from a place of having really high expectations. And you guys know I am very, very picky about my mascaras and also very, very picky about my tubing formulas. And I don't really think there's any sense in belaboring the point. It just didn't work for me. But overall, I think that they did what they set out to do. They made a beautiful, concise capsule of a minimalist makeup routine, very much in response to the conversations that we've been having for the last year or so. And I feel like it is very relevant in that sense. And I also just think that it's beautiful. So I hope that you guys did find this valuable. If you have any additional questions about Merit Beauty, make sure to leave those in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them for you guys. And again, this is shoppable on their website as well as now on Sephora. And if you did enjoy this video, guys, do give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.